Hello and welcome to the continent of Paleofalacia. I'm Cleanly Moss, the creator and curator of this project. Paleofalacia is a fictional continent from a timeline much like our own, with the only real difference being the addition of this continent. This continent is the sole setting of a community speculative evolution project, with the goal of documenting the natural history of Paleofalacia from the Carboniferous to the present. This video is in a way an intro to the continent, discussing its formation, geologic history, and early fossil record from before the first phase. Now, let's get things started. Paleofalacia's formation is like most continents, being formed from granitoids and basilic melts emerging from the mantle, as well as through the formation of volcanic island arcs. The oldest rocks present on Paleofalacia are those from the time of the continent's formation, being around 2.3 billion years old. This directly lines up with the current consensus of when the present volume of continental crust was established. These rocks are present on the eastern half of Paleofalacia, in a fairly small section along the east's modern mountain range. Western Paleofalacia, however, is notably younger than the eastern half, with the rocks dating to about 560 million years old, forming in the late Ediacaran. This later formation was likely caused by an increase vol in volcanic activity as the continent neared Gondwana. In the Precambrian, very little in the way of fossils are found, with the only records coming from 1.5 billion years ago in eastern Paleofalacia. These fossils are that of stromatolites, or at least what's left of them, as they are extremely fragmentary due to the age. This reveals that the first inhabitants of Paleofalacia weren't animals or plants, but instead the mighty cyanobacteria. Later in the Precambrian, it's undoubtable that due to the global presence of the Ediacaran biota, these archaic organisms like Dickinsonia, Kimberella, and the Petalomans did exist in the waters off Paleofalacia's coastlines. But as of now, there are no examples of fossil-bearing Ediacaran rocks on the continent. In these Precambrian times, much of Paleofalacia was extremely inhospitable, with the only refuges for life being found in the microbial mats along the coastline. Globally, there was extremely low oxygen levels, and little, if any, life on land. Except for the mountain ranges, the scenery of Paleofalacia would have been nothing but rocks and sand. Massive volcanoes likely occurred across the whole of Paleofalacia's Precambrian history, with it seeming to be an extremely volatile continent, especially towards the later parts of the Precambrian, as it approached Gondwana. The Cambrian is the first period of the Phranoozoic Eon, and therefore the first of the Paleozoic Era. It is a time most notable for the extremely sudden radiation of complex life. This so-called Cambrian explosion is often regarded as an origin point for many modern phyla. Invertebrates like arthropods and briopleurid worms were dominant with the most notable organisms at the time being creatures like trilobites, lobopodians, and radiodonts. In the waters around Paleofalacia during this period, it's likely it shared similar biota to those, like what is found in other places across the globe, such as the close-by Emu Bay Shale. However, there is little in the way of evidence for these animals, as Paleofalacia's only sedimentary Cambrian formation is small and a single, fragmentary red lichid is all that has been found. The most notable part of Paleofalacia's Cambrian record is actually the igneous and metamorphic rocks found on the western side of the continent. These rocks tell the story of Paleofalacia's collision with Gondwana. Gondwana itself in our timeline only formed between the late Ediacaran and the middle Cambrian, with Paleofalacia closing in during this time. By the middle of the Ferrogian, about 490 million years ago, 
Paleophilacia had collided with Gondwana. With a mountain range spanning the length of the continent growing upwards, bearing numerous volcanoes. These mountains reached upwards of 500 meters by this time, growing throughout the Ordovician. On the eastern side of Paleophilacia, the mountains which formed in the Precambrian started to erode, with northernmost mountain range shrinking considerably, and the southernmost shrinking slightly. These ancient long dead volcanoes would eventually provide a great banquet for the oncoming storm of land plants. Not too much is known of Ordovician Paleophilacia. At this time, it can be assumed that Paleophilacia continued to move south with Gondwana while still colliding with it. The mountains likely continued to grow during this period, with the volcanics slowly reducing. Sea levels were quite high at the time, but as Paleophilacia was fairly uh, high up compared to modern Paleophilacia, it was not too much underwater, except for some portions in the north. And in these portions, it's likely that non-vascular plants could be found. No fauna have been found in the limited sedimentary deposits from the Ordovician, but it's likely the fauna that was present was similar to those across the globe, having recognizable clades from the Cambrian like trilobites, and newer groups like articulated brachiopods, cephalopods, and crinoids being present. These newer groups would become dominant during the period, overtaking the Cambrian fauna found beforehand. Stuff like the titanic cephalopod Endoceras could likely have been found, being the largest organisms on the planet at the time, dwarfing all before them. Newer forms of arthropods would have also been found, like the Eurypterids and other Chelicerids. Early things which would be recognizable as vertebrates probably were also present. The Silurian was the start of an important change for Paleophilacia, as it signaled the first part of the continent's separation from Gondwana. A rift started to appear during the later half of the period in the north, and slowly made its way south through the eroding mountain range. As it pulled away from the continent, it sank about 30 meters, which resulted in much more of the continent being submerged. Early vascular plants took advantage of this, taking over the shorelines of these damp areas, with genera like Baragoafia being found on the shorelines. The Silurian is also of note globally, as it signified the first fully terrestrial fauna on the planet. There is clear evidence of millipedes, centipedes, and trigonotarbids being found in terrestrial environments. In Paleophilacia specifically, there is evidence of a millipede trackway showing clear evidence of animals being present. It's likely there was at least a simple food web occurring on the shorelines, with predatory invertebrates like trigonotarbids being clear signifiers of this. In the waters around the continent, bony fish were likely starting to become present with examples of Osteichthians being found. Numerous jawless fish were also present, like Galeaspids and Anaspids. Arthropods like Eurypterids diversified greatly in the Silurian as well, stalking both fresh and salt water. While other arthropods like Trilobites were still struggling to recover after the Ordovician extinction event. On Paleophilacia, the most important period regarding the future of its fauna is probably the Devonian. Officially, at around 360 million years ago, Paleophilacia had split from Gondwana and started moving away. By this point, Paleophilacia had experienced what the rest of the world had also. 
a widespread explosion of land plants. This spread of land plants was heightened in the north by the rich volcanic soil created in the eroding mountains. The south, however, however was much drier during the Devonian, only experiencing minimal plant life until the Carboniferous. Much like the previous Silurian, the land was conquered by invertebrates, with clades like insects evolving at this time. The myriapods and chelicerates that were present in the Silurian continued to diversify on land. There was an additional group which made their way onto land at this point, that being the vertebrates. This clade made their way to Paleophilacia before the split, with animal resembling the stem tetrapod Acanthostega being present. By this point, however, the stem tetrapods had become isolated on Paleophilacia, spurring on the evolution of land-dwelling vertebrates outside of the yet-to-evolve crown tetrapods. In the waters around Paleophilacia, fish had greatly diversified, like in the rest of the world, with the most dominant clade being the placoderms. Though, the other clades of fish like Osteichthians and Chondrichthians had also diversified from their ancestors in the Silurian. The marine invertebrates had also continued to diversify, with the Eurypterids still being a dominant predatory force, and Trilobites starting to actually bounce back from the Ordovician. Many of these clades, however, would not see the next period due to a major extinction event at the end of the Devonian. The Devonian is also pointed at as being the first time period when parts of mainland Paleophilacia started to split into islands, with erosion nearly completely splitting a part of eastern Paleophilacia off. This would be the first of many smaller islands yet to come in Paleophilacia's continental lifespan. That brings us to the start of the first phase, set 50 million years after it split off of Gondwana in the Carboniferous, specifically in the Moscovian. It was the least active period of Paleophilacia's lifespan so far, with no active volcanism occurring. The world as a whole was also experiencing the late Paleozoic Ice Age, which was the most extensive and longest lasting ice house of the Phranerozoic. However, as Paleophilacia was near to the equator, plants thrived, conquering the continent even more than prior, and animal life had diversified greatly to match. Now if you want to find out more regarding this project, or if you want to participate, uh, look at the Google Doc in the description and pinned comment below, uh, as well as check out my Twitter at, at CleanlyMoss1, or join the Discord, also present in the description and pinned comments. I hope you enjoyed, consider subscribing for more, because this is but the first of many videos to come from Paleophilacia.